Hello guys, welcome to another video. This is the Alfa Romeo Mito. It has the 1.3 liter multi-jet engine and it has an uh, engine noise, a very loud engine noise here near the timing chain. The car also has some codes and when doing the diagnosis it has synchronization issues with the timing chain and it also has oil pressure fault codes. So it is uh, really a very serious issue on this engine. So let's take out here the timing chain and see what's what. As you may know by now, the timing of this, this car is chain driven, not belt driven, okay? And on early motors, on early engines of this car, uh, this that kind of thing was happening all of the time because the injector for the chain, yes, this chain has an oil injector, uh, came loose with time. And with that, the oil pressure was coming off of the bolt of the oil injector okay and in this way the chain is stretching too much in doing that noise for this car maybe the same is happening we have to see we have to take it all apart to see what's happening with this timing so this video will be a very thorough tutorial how to replace the timing chain and how to find the reason why the chain was suddenly making all this noise because the customer stated that this issue appeared out of nothing Next we want to remove here the air intake box and for this you do not need to take out here the cover for the air filter but I want to see the condition of it. Whoa! Whoa! Jesus! taking out here the, the connector for the ECU because I have to take out the ECU of the car because of the access to the engine mount already removed one of them the other in, in the process and also this one taking out here this uh, connector for the temperature sensor I believe of the exhaust yeah, I know that you have to press on this but uh, sometimes doing that it breaks so like this you can also do it so as you can imagine i don't want to leave here nothing that will get in the way of doing the job including here the ecu this job here is not for the common diy okay this is more like a pro job even some pros do not like to do timing chains they only like to do timing belts uh, the reason why there is is because this uh, chain, the sprockets are not fixed, they are free and that scares the hell of a, a lot of technicians. I myself um, find it easier to do like this than uh, some other way. Now it's time to raise just a little bit the engine to be able to remove the engine mount. Torx E14 over here. And also a E18 Torx here on the 
larger bolts. You may be asking why I'm not using my big ratchet. Yeah, I broke it. Trying to take out the pulley for, from the donor engine of the 75. Again. Yeah, that story. That same old story. At this point you can raise up a bit uh, the engine to, ch to see if it is making a lot of force or not. It is not. It's broken over there. This is the support for the engine, for the engine cover. It's broken. It is broken because the engine cover was not present, so... Sorry about that. So this bracket will shake too much because not having the cover also makes it unstable. Now it's almost time to take out here the cover. That is the final purpose of all of this. But uh, to take out this cover, you have to take out the oil sump. There is no way around it, okay? Believe me, I tried in the past and uh, it has to happen. Also, when you have this kind of issue, you want to take out the sump to clean everything. Because sometimes you have debris of the guide of the chain metal flakes and plastic parts and whatever that are on the sump and you want to get rid of that okay you want to clean everything you must do a very clean job on these engines about this accessories belt i already did a video how to do it how to remove replace everything also check here the pulley for the alternator this has to free wheel to one side and also i have a older video why does this pull this this crankshaft pull this break it is because of this here this here pulley okay this is also seems to be okay the belt is come, starting to go a little bit to the outside so th this is starting to be crooked i have to replace this okay but down on the description you have a lot of videos for this in detail <coughs> 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 Now comes the scary part, which is to synchronize the engine. These engines are easy to do if you have all of the tools. Guess what? I do not have all of the tools, so it will be a little bit awkward. I did ask for the tools, they come tomorrow, and I will have them for the lock itself. But to, re but to remove certain bolts, I do not have the tools required, so it will be... <laughs> This will be interesting. What you want to do is find out where are the locks on here, the, the cam cover. One of those is behind here. Yes, we have two. One over here, behind this, behind the rail, and another one here in front of the turbo or behind the turbo. Uh, you only need to lock one of them, but you need to check both. What I mean by this is sometimes we do not know if the cams are phased out uh, with, between one and another, okay? What you want to do is to take out here the the plug, this over here, but this is very near to the turbo. It's very difficult to put the the tool here without removing the turbo, or it, it is mostly impossible with the special tool. There are two ways to see that. But behind the engine, we, we have another one just like this, and that one is possible to see, uh, to put the tool in. My idea is, and what I usually do is, I put the tool on the other side, on this side, I take out the plug, and with a mirror, I can see if it is synchronized or not, okay? If it is, I disregard altogether this procedure of removing here the turbo. Um, some multi-jet engines, 1.3, this is an, another spot, it's easier to do, but on this one, it is, it is just like so. These parts are very sensitive, are really very sensitive, so you must uh, save them somewhere dust will not be an issue and humidity eight millimeter so you want to rotate the engine until you see an indentation on the cam 
as you can see is round and now you start to see the indentation at this point you can put on the tool until it locks and as you can see the indentation goes away now okay on the other hole you want to see if the indentation is right on the center of the hole in this case not being able to put the tool in a visual confirmation is enough now the thing is you want to keep it close here you do not want to lock it yet in place you just want to be close in this one and this one so now you can have a locking tool down there if it is a fiat gearbox it is up front where i have my drill bit right over there on the gearbox if it is a gm or opal gearbox the lock will be underneath here much more accessible but on the fiat gearbox is like this and now i have my crankshaft locked and the cams are not locked but are very close so on this uh, glued oil some sometimes we have to do some strange th things to take them out normally with a bang they will come out but this one seems not to be cooperating so i will try to open open it up instead these are very very nasty jobs take it easy okay take it slow much better can you hear the sound it sounds good it sounds like it's moving okay In order to remove here the oil sump, you have to take out this, here this bracket. It's not that difficult, it's just uh, four 13 millimeter head bolts over here, one here, there, there and there, and two 15s, one through here, another one through there, behind, okay? And then you take out all of the bolts for the oil sump, and you remove it like I show you early. And taking out the oil sump, you now have the first clue for what happened. This is a bit common on these engines. Once the chain starts to rattle, the, uh, the, the chain will chew up here the, the guide. This, this is part of the guide. As you can see, before it breaks, it has a lot of scratch marks. A lot, right there, on that area. Before it, it breaks, the chain has a, has a lot of slap on it. So I have a lot more pieces on the inside of the oil sump. With this, the chain now will start to grind on the back cover of the guide, which is metal. So that's why sometimes this engine seizes up, because metal inside of the oil will create a sandpaper-like effect on the bearings and whatnot. But this one, we just caught it on time. I think it was only one or two days ago that the customer stated that the issue appeared. And uh, that's why I asked the customer to stop the car immediately and I take out the oil sum to see the damage and here it is as you can see here the damage is really with the chain as you can see the oil is like uh, paint almost black paint is very very odd on the modern engine it means that the remap that it was done on this car is very bad because a lot of fuel is getting onto the oil creating here a paste just uh, as you pass your finger it feels like sand indeed in fact it is carbon look at this like looks like paint i was here searching for uh, metal particulates but there are none which is very nice but as you can see it is very bad to have your car badly remapped because the internals imagine the, the piston rings on this car on this engine just imagine this is very bad this looks like paint almost so I will recommend for a remap for the original software. Next, I want to take out the water pump and I want to take out the coolant in order not to make a mess. I want to put the hose over here on the drain 
not being able to be doing it very successfully because <laughs> angles and reasons. So now the tip of the hose is right outside the car and the 13 millimeter over there. Just undo it a bit. And I can actually use here the hole for the four light adjuster. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Now with the cap off you can or let it rain like it's like it is or take out a, bit, a little bit more but if you take too much you may make a mess much better now but as you can see it's dripping on there but okay I think I can deal with that to remove here the water pump it's just four nuts 10 millimeter ones self-locking I think it, they are the only self-locking nuts on this entire engine, if I'm correct, I believe I am. So there is no way to have a mistake there. Yeah, this water pump is new and the antifreeze is also new, so I'll ask, ask the customer what he wants to, to do. If the antifreeze has more than two years, I recommend it to be uh, replaced, even though it seems good quality and new, because the antifreeze starts to get acidic after some time yeah I think also there are some strips some testing strips that you have to do the testing but uh, cannot find them all the bolts are out except the main crank one still not been able to get the tool yes so it's loose just now the bolt the lower bolt to undo only that bolt remains to, to take out. Remember that all crank bolts for Fiat engines, the diesel ones, are all left hand threaded. Which means to remove it, you have to turn it clockwise, not counterclockwise, okay? As you can see, the chain is stretched like crazy. The tensioner is extended all the way, which is also not good. And the guide over here is, has disappeared altogether. So this is really the end of the line for this climbing chain. One of the reasons why I like this engine so much is as you have your camshafts locked with these two tools over here on the side of the head and down on the block itself, you can rotate whichever position you want your chain and it's, no matter the position you always have a perfect timing. Most important thing of, of this uh, timing chain is this squirter over here, this injector, this oil injector. It must be, you must replace it and replace also these bolts, they are banjo bolts, so the oil can uh, go through them and you do not want to reuse them. As you can see they are, they have holes, okay. Here on this flange, where you have the bolt that goes to the crankshaft, by the way, that bolt uses a O-ring, a very fine, fine O-ring, and it comes with a new bolt. And this flange over here, you have to have two things in mind. The wear here on the, the oil pump, it is a bit steep. 
a bit and uh, also here the wear on the seal you see if you pass your finger you can feel a bump so this is uh, best to be new also The next thing to see here is the oil pump. As you can imagine, this oil pump is moved here by this center flange. This center flange will be new uh, uh, also. And this oil pump is variable, which means that we have a variable geometry on the oil pump. Very, very cool to see this working. Which means as you are turning here the oil pump, you have a small chamber that is opening over here. And this opening creates a vacuum that sucks the oil through here, the cavity. As this uh, opening is starting to close, close more and more and more, it creates a pressure. And that pressure will go to the engine. Through the solenoid, as you move this outer shell outwards, you now have a variable position of the chambers, creating more or less suction and pressure of the oil. As you can see, also this also will move. For example, in this way, we'll, you will have zero oil pressure. Obviously, having here this spring, in case of failure of this component, you always will have the maximum oil pressure possible. In order to take out here the oil pump, this is the second generation, okay? So you start here to take out these uh, small parts of the water of the oil pump. The main thing is to disassemble everything to make sure that every surface, surface is okay, not scratched and not polluted of fragments of uh, metal, for example, or something else. Make sure that all the parts go out and they do not lose track of any of them. So we have here this lower ring as well. So this may seem uh, the bottom of the oil pump. Yes, it may. So now this outer race, let's take it out. Um, trying to prevent here the spring from flying off too far so you can do it by the spring or you can do it like so I believe let me see here if I can do it like this yes I can okay so the spring is there so what you want to see is the friction parts this outer ring for example it is completely new Although the, the effect of the chain has been scrapping over here, this is common to happen when the chain starts to wobble. This th did not affect in any way here the oil pump. Pay very close attention to this part that is fitted over here. Looks like a piece of the of a piston ring. It is to be expected to be like this. So it creates there a seal, a tight seal over there, just like a piston ring actually. Now this next part here will be a little bit finicky because this ring over here floats around. Also obviously you want to see the condition of it. No scratches, no not, nothing broken. The top one the same thing. Yeah. The idea is to uh, align everything. Let's write it like this, okay? Align everything to be able to put the, 
the thin, the fins in those little little fins because they have to fit on the top ring and also on the bottom ring. Let's see how it goes. Okay. The next thing is all the fins have uh, sides. So this is the side, the scraper side, that goes onto the outside ring. Because if you notice on the inner side, you have this uh, nut machine part. So it goes like so. Okay. So as you can see, I'm already hitting the bottom ring because it, this has to be absolutely aligned like so So it turns out they will go into place if you mess around with them a bit. Now everything is as supposed to be done. Just apply a bit of oil over here because now you have the plate that has also to be a bit uh, oily. And it must not be scratchy at all. This oil pump is new, it's just like new. No problems whatsoever with this oil pump. Many of, uh, of you guys may want to replace this because if it is a variable geometry one and that may scare the hell out of you don't be afraid okay i believe this is even better than the ones that are not variable geometry because the construction is really very good so now just uh, put the plate in everything is in place and this oil pump still has the valve the bypass valve if you have over pressure of your oil pump you still have your valve to take out that excess pressure out okay Test the pump every step of the way. Make sure this seal here is good. This one is okay. You also have this here, this seal on the two, onto the solenoid, and we just want to apply a bit of engine oil to be easier to insert. You can also use a bit over here on this seal. Okay. 
Oh yeah. For the crank seal over here, you have now this part that will serve you for two things. A tool and also another tool. So with this, we want to see if it is really the, the right size, because sometimes things happen, okay? And on this side, you can see that is in fact this size. The factory inserts this with a tool or with a punch that makes those marks over there. I want to find a tool that is better for that. And I, in fact, it is in, on my hand, this one. Just like so, like so, and punch it. So here we have everything. Now we have here a new chain, as, and as you can see, we have oh, we have no slack whatsoever on the chain. So that is a plus. Okay, we have new uh, injector and bolts coming in, not here yet. Okay, and uh, you, as you can see, this bolt this bolt here was scratching on the chain, and the injector itself is also. Right there. The chain also touched here the point. This is not too bad. I already seen them completely worn the way. So it is very important to use a new injector just to be safe. But mainly here, the bolts have to be new and you have to use a, a special type of Loctite. I usually, usually use the, the blue one. Okay, it's good enough for this application. Also, the lower bolt has to come in because this small O-ring only, is only sold with the bolt. And also the bolt is important to be new because of the stretching of the tightening, okay? So as you can see, this uh, O-ring is completely gone. And so that got me thinking. We have a good oil pump. We have a acceptable injector in terms of uh, oil leaks, oil pressure leak, okay? I cannot imagine so many pressure being lost on this injector being tight the way it was obviously to be uh, to be appearing a warning light on the dashboard so my uh, my thought is as you could saw this chain was stretched all the way like this and the tensioner was extended all the way the oil pressure comes in through here and pushes out this piston okay my idea is this piston is out so far that the oil pressure comes out through the sides of the piston. That is my idea. I actually never saw a chain like this so stretched. It was incredible the amount of stretch of this chain. In fact, the reason why these guides break is because of the stretching of the chain. In the, the stretching of the chain, I believe it is because of the carbon of on the oil. And the carbon of the oil is because of the bad remap that, that the car has. So, yeah, as you can imagine, remaps in Portugal are just a mess. So my idea here is, I don't think there is any problem with the, the bearings, the rod bearings and the support bearings of the crankshaft. If they were, we should have some noises coming out from the engine we did, we, and we do not have that. Also, the bottom of the oil sump is completely clean. No debris of metal or plastic or, or nothing or um, bearing material nothing like that as soon as the car broke this plastic part the client stopped the car immediately which is which was really nice because as you can see i just have just a little bit of a mark of the chain here scratching off this on this metallic part which means no metal whatsoever was on the oil just a bit of uh, aluminium for for the oil cover but uh, that is not important
So as you can see here, the guides are in place and the chain and sprockets are too in place. And again, you do not need to position this in any shape or form. This can be 360 degrees, the bolt is, the bolt is catching, okay? You can spin this 360 degrees, it does not matter the placement of it, okay? Obviously, you have to have the crankshaft uh, locked in place and also here the cams. By the, way, by the way, the cams are not still very much in place or imagine that they are not for some reason. You can uh, take advantage of this moment to put them in place. What I will do is to torque down this bolt and in this way now I have here a point from which I can spin the camshafts and finally lock them in place. Yes, you can do the timing of this, of this engine with the cams uh, kind of uh, out of place. Yes, you can do that and finally at the end don't forget to put them in place, okay? Do not use this uh, locking tools to hold on to the camshafts to do the tightening because you will break a camshaft. Now the cams are locked in place, this sprocket here is locked with the bolt in place, but down there you still have the sprocket, the lower sprocket, it's, it is still free, it is the last thing to be tightened, it tightens with that flange for the, for the oil pump, okay? So you can now put here the tensioner and do the correct tensioning of the chain. Okay, now, all this time you have to be sure that this lower sprocket is located all the way against the, the crankshaft, okay? Not to be out of place. This lower sprocket is still free, okay? It is not yet tightened because it is that outer flange that will go um, do the tightening. So do not take out yet the locks for the engine. The next step here is to put the cover. The cover is actually the, here the, the oil pump, okay? And for that also use here the gasket. For this application Alfa Romeo says not to put any RTV except on the points that meet here the upper head, the lower head with the upper head over here and the lower sump with the block. So you have here, if you pay close attention, marked on the gasket some areas that have these stripes over here there there over there and down here one there and one there okay only six and only to the side that meets the engine okay to the cover side you do not want to put any rtv and on this side just a drip just a, a very small nudge of uh, glue i'll show you in a minute
Now the cover is in place. Do not uh, tighten any bolts just yet. Just finger tight or so, okay? So now you can see this play on the cover. You can see that the crankshaft over here does not align all the time with the cover, okay? Because the cover moves. And you have to take advantage of this, uh, let's call it uh, adjustment, to center the cover with the flange. You do not need to tighten right now, but you have to put the flange in place right now. This flange is now a tool that centers the cover and the oil pump as well. Okay, so now spin it, it's free, and now you can tighten all of the bolts, okay? Nine Newton meters is the recommended. Always check for, this, for the free spin of this flange you can save the bolt by the way the bolt is here is new it has the marvelous o-ring and it is left hand right threaded so to tighten it you go to the left okay but this is the trick for this cover Yes, you can rotate the engine only to the right side, okay? And now here my tool has this uh, has this little locking pin, which also indicates me that this is, this is the position to face it up, okay? Now I will rotate the engine until this tool goes to the locking position. At that point, I also will lock the crankshaft. If it locks correctly, the engine is correctly timed. Don't forget to plug up this connector and the holder for the wiring above. Okay, now.
So it appears to be running great. No noises on the chain. Everything is nice. New oil, new coolant. Appears to have uh, here a, a noise that may seem, may seem to be a leaky injector. But this car has four new injectors or recent. So I do not know. I have to see with the customer. Okay. Uh, just let it run for 10-15 minutes. Just to take out all, the, all of the bubbles of the coolant. Top off the coolant again and do a road test. Okay, like I usually do always. In the meantime, while this runs, I will do here a, a repair on the boot because the boot here does not open. It just opens on the remote and the warning for the boot all this open is present. So the issue may be here with the wires on the on the hinge over there. Already did a video for that down in the description. The video will be there, okay? It is for the Spider 939, but it is exactly the same procedure. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you can uh, consider subscribe and hit like on that like button down there, okay? Also down on the description, there are a lot of things that will be useful for you related to timing chains, timing belts, lack of power, uh, brakes, uh, crank no start, a lot of stuff regarding everything automotive. Also down in the description, links for helps for the channel if you are able to consider that, okay? I see you next time, guys. Bye!